Video games have always had various technologies powering the animation cycles. Since their inception, they simply used pixel art, and then statically animated polygon masses, and then bone systems. But physics simulations became possible in the late 90s and very much changed how many animations in games were both created and executed. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today GameRanks wants to ask the question, what is ragdoll physics and how does it work in video games? So on Twitter, we recently got a question from at five stars every day about ragdoll physics. We thought that's interesting. And by the way, you can follow the Game Ranks Twitter or my own Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we all have a great time interacting there. So to talk about ragdoll physics, we have to talk about how animation is set up a little bit first. Early video games animation was based in pixels. It was essentially hand drawn on tiny little canvases of say 16 by 16 pixels. The number is a variable, but generally you saw multiples of 16. And very talented artistic people figured out ways to use those extremely limited constraints to give us beautiful art that moved and felt alive. Throughout the 90s, 3D video games started to happen more and more regularly. Polygons were originally animated not incredibly dissimilarly to pixel art, at least in concept. It was essentially all hand done, and it involved manually moving around all the shapes that made up a character in order to animate them. This meant a jump animation, a run animation, a walk animation, a stand animation, a do nothing animation, and a dying animation. And while you could make different ones for context sensitive events, like dies on rocks, or dies on rocks 1, dies on rocks 2, it was a fairly limited way of doing things. But in 1998, a game called Jurassic Park Trespasser happened. It was the very first game to use ragdoll physics. In fact, it was actually the first game to use classical mechanics as its basis for the physics of the game. This meant things like gravity and collision were handled in a manner that was more realistic. Now, it wasn't a perfect game. In fact, at the time, it was rather buggy and criticized for that. But the game's animation was all done using inverse kinematics, which, to use real-world terms, bones. All the characters had a bone system that various vertices on the polygonal mesh that made up the shape of the character were tied to. As the bones moved, it moved. This allowed for things like seamless arms and legs, where they were usually made up as their own shapes before. When characters died, the bones were basically just let go. And because the world was based around classical mechanics, a physics simulation could be ran on these bones that, aside from the fact they were connected to each other, essentially allowed them to fall and go in whatever direction the thing that they landed on would have forced them to in real life. Or at least, kind of real life closer to real life. This essentially allows the death animation, or really any animation that ragdoll physics is used in, to be unique based on where it happens. Now, death animations were where they were most prominently featured in early implementations of it, but over the years it's really evolved to become something much more useful. For instance, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, several Halos, and Medal of Honor, among other games, used a technique called blended ragdoll, which would take the pre-made animation and constrain the output of it into a manner that could easily be transferred from any frame into a physical simulation that didn't just feel like going limp. It would allow for a much more realistic death cycle. But blended ragdoll doesn't just mean they die in a more realistic way. It can also mean when you've got a foot on a stair, it looks like it's on the stair instead of through the stair. The ragdoll can be used to bend the animation that you've pre-made and thus make it more context sensitive to the environment. This can make it much, much more realistic and save animators a lot of time. Ultimately, what ragdoll physics amounts to is a means for objects and characters of the in-game world to interact with the environment in a more realistic way than the animation that a single animator or even a team of animators can do because every single possible situation in theory requires a very slightly different animation. By having bone systems that interact with other solids in the world, we not only simplify animation, but it makes it possible to have context-sensitive animation that doesn't require new animation. And while this in itself may not be what one would call artistic, 
It's also not really possible to do animation that takes into account literally every possible situation. Ragdoll Physics has done a massive amount for what video games look like without you ever really seeing any of the systems in place. You just see the result. Essentially, imagine this. If you went entirely limp, if you just stop using your muscles, you'd basically fall and bend in a way that your skeleton would allow. That's ragdoll physics. And it's changed video games for the better, and will probably continue to do so for a very long time. Now, this is a simple explanation, and there's a lot more we could talk about regarding ragdoll physics, and so let's do so in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.